Notes fields take up a lot of screen real estate, as you can see here with the instructions, which is a lot like a notes field. And if you don't have a need for a tab control, you know, tabs over here where you can put different pieces of information under different tabs, essentially hiding the notes, then you're using up a lot of screen real estate. So here's a little trick. If you don't have a tab control to hide your notes under and make it big like you want to see all the notes, then let's demonstrate what you can do. We'll come over here to notes and watch the notes just appear out of nowhere. And I click again and they disappear or I can also click anywhere and they disappear. Then we also have a different version of notes which is pretty easy to do. It's not as sophisticated as this one. It's a popover and that's the most common way to do notes but I want to show you how to do this notes out of nowhere because it has some distinct advantages and we'll cover those once you see the technique. So go into layout mode and it doesn't look like there's anything here until you click. You notice that we have a rectangle that's the same color as the background, and it's also locked. So we'll go and unlock it, and then move it a little bit, and you notice that there's a notes field there. We'll click on that, and we'll unlock it as well. And we lock it so that when you're in layout mode, you don't do this when you're trying to, let's say, select these fields. See how it moves that? But if I lock it, I can drag across this locked object and select these objects right here instead. So that's why we lock this so we don't accidentally move it all the time. Now you also notice that this field is named. It's called notes field. So there's an important uh, you know, feature here that's going to be in the script that you're going to see when we click on this button. So remember that. As well as we have prevented access in browse mode as well as in find mode. So we'll go ahead and undo all this stuff and we'll have to go a little bit back but it's easier than trying to put it back in the exact same spot and we'll undo the move and then we'll finally undo the lock and then it's back to the way it was so you can drag across that object that locked object and not get it selected if you don't want it and not have it move of course too so let's take a look at the script and see what it does not very complicated you check to see if the layout object name equals the script parameter. So let's take, there is a script parameter here, so we'll take a look at it. You'll see that there's the word notes field passed in there. So we're saying with this one, we're saying pass in notes field. On another layout, you might have it called something else and you might want to pass a different parameter. That, this gives it adaptiveness, you know, dynamicness. So that's why I use a script parameter here. So we can say, does the layout object name equal that. Well if that's the case then you're going to exit the note fields rather than enter them. So really what you want to look at first is this entering the note fields. You'll see it just says go to object, get script parameter, notes field, that's what the fields name so it goes to it. But if it happens to be the active layout object name, your cursor's in it, then it's going to go ahead and commit the records. Which is why when you just click out of here, so if we go back to browse mode, you can see right now it's going to the object and then second time you click the button, it commits the record because it knows it's active right now. But you can also click here because it just commits it and it goes to the background. So the idea here is that what happens is when you click here and go to that field, it brings it forward. This is just how FileMaker's worked and it's worked this way since FileMaker 3.0 as far back as I can remember. And it simply brings that field forward even though you don't have access to it. You can't normally click into it. Anywhere here you can see I'm clicking all over the place. I can click into this field normally and work with it. I can't get into it, but the script can override that feature. And this is an important thing to understand about scripting is it often overrides manual features such as getting into a field. It's doing what you told it to. Go to that field. I don't care what the settings are. You told me to go to it. I'm going to get into that, put my cursor there so I can type my notes in there, and then you know at that point then you can go ahead and exit and it makes it disappear again because you're not in it and that mask is over it. So working with the popover button is really quite easy, right? And you scroll over here and you notice that we've made it display over to the right. And you can change it wherever you want, make it over there, make it over here, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's pretty easy to work with when we put the exact same notes field in there. So that's a perfectly valid way to work with notes. But notice that even though we told it to go to the right, it goes to the left. 
That's probably a good thing because then you wouldn't be able to see it like we couldn't see in layout mode. We had to scroll over. But sometimes you want FileMaker to do exactly what you told it to. And you have that control here with this notes out of nowhere, whereas you don't really have it here. It's going to place it where it can fit it and not necessarily where you told it to go. Again, that's usually a good thing, but sometimes you want it to do what you want it to do. And I like having control. But the really the biggest advantage of the notes out of nowhere is that it's backward compatible. In other words, FileMaker 12 through 15 have the same file format. You can open up a FileMaker 15 file in FileMaker 12. It will work just fine. They're all .fmp12. The only issue is, is when you open up a 15 file in 12, is you won't see all the 15 specific features. And what you have here on this feature, this popover button, is it was introduced in FileMaker 13. So you won't see that popover working in FileMaker 12. So if you have a solution that needs to be opened up, let's say you're selling it on the internet and you want people to be able to open it regardless of FileMaker 12 through 15, this is not a good solution. It's not going to work on the 12 people. But this one will work for you. So it's all about how you look at it. Popovers are really cool. I use them all the time. But sometimes you need to know some alternatives. And this also teaches you a lot about how FileMaker works as far as bringing stuff forward. So you might use it in some other way other than for a notes field.